Hello, it's time for Monday Makes. Monday Makes. I'm still working on a theme tune. So today, uh, the kids are back at school after half term. And you know what? I had a great time. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I now feel really bad for saying, oh, the kids are going to be at home all the time. Because we had a great time. It took us a few days of horror to get into it. But you know what? After a few days of de-schooling, what my friends call it, um, we had a great time and we all settled into it. We were in isolation all week because Teddy had a temperature at the beginning, at the end of the week before, and then various reasons that are very complicated. Um, we didn't, haven't, still haven't got test results, but we were fine. We're totally fine. Boys are back at school. Things are good. And actually, I did manage to get quite a lot done last week, which is some kind of miracle um so shall we start with the lockdown blanket update so i have been enjoying some new color combinations uh that i literally have only just discovered because i'm using up old wool which is great so the first one where is it i'm going to show you is this one which is amazing uh if i do say so myself so this one is stockinette stitch with and i remember to do a border this time so that's just three knit stitches at the beginning of every row um and look how beautiful these colors are so it's like cream pale pink and like a dusky i don't know orangey rust color um and i'm slightly obsessed i would never ever have put these together ever before and I started knitting with them and I was like oh I love them so there's that one uh, and then I'm just starting I was hoping to have this one done by the time I did this video but not quite yet so this is another one same colors um, but I'm doing it in moss stitch which is quite sweet and quite delicate so there's that one uh, and then I thought I'd give uh, some cabling a go again. So seeing as I made my, my ear warmer last week, you have to go and have a look. I've been practicing my cabling. It turns out you need way more stitches <laughs> than you normally would if you're cabling because it goes <laughs> like that and goes all squidged. So this, which one was the first one I did? I think this was the first one. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? It's not the neatest, but it's okay. Add a little bit of texture to the blanket, which would be quite nice. I mean, it'll need to be stretched <laughs> so it'll fit, but that's not the point. Uh, this one I added more stitches in and it's still really narrow. So I'll have to just remember next time I do cabling, I have to remember uh, to add in loads more stitches because it just goes through. Um, and I would love to know what kind of cable needle you have if you use one. I only have straight ones. Um, I find it quite tricky to make sure that no stitches fall off anywhere. So I've seen ones that are sort of looped or have a little bump in the middle. Um, which one do you use? And please, can you recommend me um, the best one? Because I'd love to get a proper one that would make cabling a bit easier. So that's that one. Uh, then, do you remember last week I made a really bobbly one out of the sort of lilac, really light purple? And it was the same stitch as my jumper. I didn't like it because I used two big needles. I tried it again and came out with this, which is much nicer. Uh, and it's sort of, I use much smaller needles and it is a sort of fluffier wool. It's not quite as um, smooth. So that is, isn't it much nicer than the, the funny old purple one? I think I pulled the purple one out, so I can't even show you that one, but it's much nicer. So that's that one. That is the same stitch as my jumper which i'll show you in a minute uh, and then i'm really excited about this eee, isn't it sweet let me just show you that oh where am i going there let's see so it's really messy really i mean it's got threads all over the place and if you make these please can you tell me what to do with those threads I don't know what to do with them. Do I just sew them in to the back or what? So the plan with this is to make a few more and then I'm going to make bigger ones. And I'm going to make loads of little rainbows to go on top of squares. So it might sit in the middle of a square like that. Or um, uh, I might do a few 
different ones. I thought rainbows are quite a nice theme um, for lockdown, seeing as we're in lockdown 2.0 uh, as of Thursday. So that is my, and that's crochet. So that's a little crocheted rainbow. I thought it was just so cute. So I'm going to try and do more of those and use bigger needles and thicker wool and make bigger ones and all that kind of stuff. And maybe do a wrapped... Ooh, that's an idea. Like, wrap, you know the ones everyone puts in the windows of wrapped yarn? Wrapped yarn. Am I American? Wrapped wool around a shape. And then you could... I could do that. That would be nice. Um, and then I'm planning on... If you've ever read a book or if you're in any way crafty or enjoy knitting and art, um, you should read a book. I think it's called... Uh, where the light shines through I'll put it in the comments below in the description but basically it's great and in that book they knit uh, and crochet loads of flowers to do a flower like yarn bomb explosion across their little town and they cover the town in sunflowers and apple blossom and um, sweet peas and things like that and that is like my dream so I'm gonna try and do some crochet and knitted flowers but there aren't that many patterns out there that I like so I'm gonna have to trawl the internet and Pinterest and see what I can find but hopefully I'm gonna do some really beautiful flowers for the front of some square so that's the blanket now should we do jumper next jumper next so remember I finished the front and the back and this, I've been working on a sleeve. I haven't done that much working on it, to be honest. But it's getting there. It's much longer. I am beginning to worry that this jumper is going to be the biggest jumper ever. And it's not actually going to fit me. Because look at this, right? This is only a size medium. But it, it seems very, very big. So it's either just going to be a very big, woolly warm jumper very big see uh, or I'll just give it to my husband <laughs> to wear um, but yeah so I'm still enjoying loving knitting it and it's so beautiful so I've just got and I've done all the increasing now it's very complicated um, so now I'm just working my way up to the top of the sleeve and then I'll be able to do another sleeve and then it's just putting it all together so it's not that far from being done. Uh, and that is going to look like this lady here, I hope. <laughs> but in dark grey, obviously. And it sort of looks like that. Which is it's really lovely. I can't wait for it to actually be done. But it does look like the biggest jumper in the world. That is a burnout pattern called an easygoing knit pullover from Yarnspiration. I'll put the link in the description below. Now. Let's do, oh, things I did with the kids this week. So, we, I know that you've been following my, uh, my beautiful, hang on, uh, wrapping, my fabric wrapping. So do you remember these? I ice dyed. So I haven't hemmed them yet because I've got plans for that and they're very exciting plans. Uh, and I haven't had time with the kids around. But I wanted to get the kids to paint some so that we could have ones that we made together and that we can use, like they can wrap my presents up and I can wrap their presents up in them and we can keep them for years and years. So this is Teddy's, which was sort of a joint effort with me and Archie and Teddy. Let me show you. I don't think you'll be able to see all of it. I'll put a picture up later on my Instagram. So I've got lots and lots and lots of um, wooden stamps, which I hardly ever use um, because I find them really hard to use with paint. Um, so I have one uh, ink stampy block thing. Uh, so Teddy loved the stamps. He made a circle of cats and he's lots of dinosaurs. And there was a dinosaurs going up a hill. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, dinosaurs going up and down a hill uh, and some elephants. And then I decided that we should paint some uh, flowers. So those are my flowers, the pink ones. Those are Archie's flowers, the yellow ones. And these are Teddy's, the blue ones down here. And he drew the sea as well, which was nice. And the elephants have, let me see if I can get, they have pineapples in their tummies. <laughs> and mushrooms and pineapples in their tummies again, which is great. So they had loads of fun doing that. And I've hemmed them, so those are done now. And pop them away for when we need presents, wrapping up. 
so that's that one done. That was Teddy's. And this is Archie's. This was basically just Archie with me helping and sort of panicking about fabric paint a bit. Um, but he went for a full on scene. So in this one, we've got trees, another tree with pineapples in it, dinosaurs and a starry sky with birds in it. Then we've got trees, we've got a beach, gold beach with dinosaurs and elephants on it. And the sea with some octopuses. She's so cool. And some starfish somewhere. Yeah. So, I oh, want some rabbits, look. Little rabbits. But I was so proud of them. And that was just a really nice thing to do. It was quite stressful because they were really big and we had to do it on the floor. And I was so stressed about getting, um, I wasn't so stressed, I was quite stressed about getting fabric paint on the floor, on the carpet. But we didn't and it was fine in the end. And I'm really glad that we did those together. And then I remembered that I had fabric pens. So <laughs> we did this one, which is my favorite. Uh, and we, we all did this. This was me, Rob, and both the boys. Look at this extravaganza. Isn't it fun? So we've got flowers, and that, that's a big Triforce. If anyone plays Zelda, they'll know what a Triforce is. I went for rainbows and stars and things. That says 2020 lockdown, October. Uh, more rainbows done by the boys, butterflies, flowers, moths and things. Moths are my current doodling obsession. Um, explosion, that's Rob's duck that he's, I'm very proud of that duck, it's pretty good. Um, and then that's an ATST, that's an ATAT 80 from Star Wars. Uh, somebody wrote happy birthday. And there's just, and that's Teddy's unicorn. He was so proud of his unicorn. He did such a good job. He drew that all by himself and colored it in all by himself. And I am so excited. He loves drawing. His teachers keep telling me um, that when they try and do letters with him, he just gives up and starts drawing. <laughs> so, which they, they're very nice about and say they're not going to discourage, which is lovely. I'm really glad because I'd love him to draw. And this is my unicorn. If anyone um, has not seen Draw with Rob, uh, which is a thing he does on Instagram, I think he does it on Twitter and Facebook as well, but it's basically he's a children's book writer and illustrator called Rob Biddulph. And he does a really, really simple and really funny um, uh, drawing tutorials for kids to draw all the characters from his books and animal, like their favourite animals. So there's an alligator, there's dinosaurs, there's a unicorn, which is Teddy's favourite. There's a sleeping unicorn who sat down with her tail. Anyway, so I did a unicorn and we've all done pumpkins and alligators and dragons and things. Really recommend it. Rob Biddulph. If you look for the hashtag draw with Rob, then you'll find it. Um, and I'll pop it in the comments. Now, um, this is fabric that got you all very excited this week on Instagram. So this fabric I bought um, because again, I couldn't resist. Uh, my mum has just got a greenhouse for the first time. And my dad put it up completely by himself. <laughs> and, um, so it's in and it's done and the glass is in and they now have a greenhouse in their garden. So I saw this and was like, it has a greenhouse in it. There. And look, it's all gardening and allotmenty type things. And they love their garden so much. And mum loves gardening. So I bought that and I asked you all what I should make with it. Loads of you said a gardening apron, which was my th first thought as well. And then I thought I've done quite a lot of aprons recently and I didn't want to make another one. Then uh, a few of you went for a kneeler or what else was there? A little blouse, but I don't think I have enough fabric for a blouse, only half a metre. So I shall show you what I made. I put a little sneaky peek on Instagram. Ta-da! Look! It's a little storage basket-y boxy thing. So I've never made them before. Um, I now know how to do box corners. I love it. Basically, the tutorial I followed, which I'll put the link in the description, uh, just said, now box the corners. And I was like, I'm sorry. I felt like I was on Bake Off. You know when they just say, make the creme anglaise or whatever? And I'm like, what do I do? So, But I, I found out and it was great. So hopefully, I'm going to send that to my mum and hopefully she'll love it. Um, and I found this, I was using my scraps of fabric, so I found this quite nice. Uh, scissory one so she can use that to put anything in that she wants she can put her seed packets in 
um, or her like her trousers and things. I think it would fall over with trousers, or her sewing stuff, or whatever. So I'm going to send that to her, and I'm going to make one for my sister as well. She loves gardening as well. We're a bit of a gardening mad. Um, the female side of our family is a bit of a gardening mad um, family, and so I'm going to make her one as well and send it to her. So she has one too. So that is what I made, and I really loved making it. It wasn't very hard at all, really easy. It's got some interfacing in to keep it nice and sturdy. Um, it's got a flat bottom and a really funky lining. So yeah, really cool. Uh, now let's do pouches. So I did my pouch, haven't made any pouches today. The only making I've done today is some knitting of some squares uh, of stuff like that. So. Um, I did all my pouches last week and now people are ordering Christmas stuff like the crowns and stockings and Santa sacks and things. So I need to get making those. Uh, I need to get my head around that first uh, before I crack on with those. So I did all my orders last week um, while the kids were at home. My husband gave me a very welcome afternoon to do that. So this is the first one, just picking all the fluff off it which says Violet's Treasures from the Wild. And this is, uh, that was on Gifted Local. So I'll pack that up and take it to her tomorrow um, when I'm allowed out the house again. <laughs> but yeah, that was one of my favourite designs to make this year. Absolutely love it. And it's all flock, um, flock vinyl. So it's really textured and beautiful. And you can pop conkers and beautiful awesome leaves and things in there. They're so big, these pouches. I love them. Um, there's that one. And then I had an order for a little two-year-old girl called Anya who loves all things animals and sort of like... Uh, I was thinking, and they did say sort of cats and dogs and cows and sheep and all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking about when um, my boys were two, um, before they even really started speaking, they were doing animal noises. So I've chosen ones that they can very, she can very easily point to and go moo, meow, nay, woof, whack. <laughs> so hopefully she'll love that. And they wanted hearts and stars as well. So there they are on there. That's Anya's new pouch. So that'll go in the post. Um, I had a very nice order for a very simple navy pouch with gold, which is really popular actually. Um, and I must remember to put more photos of these on my grid. Um, so this one is for Finley. So that one will be going uh, delivered tomorrow again. That's another local order. And then this one was very exciting. I got another order for a unicorn pouch for Dala. Which is again, another local order. And look at this hilarious one. They wanted a mermaid one. So I went ahead and did some mermaids for Imogen. So yeah, I didn't want to have like Disney-esque mermaids or like really curvaceous mermaids with like big boobs and big bums. Um, I just wanted it to be really fun and quite childlike. So I went for that kind of mermaid rather than um, sort of sexy mermaid, which wouldn't be appropriate for a child. But anyway, so that is Imogen's pouch. And Dana's pouch. So that was one order that will get delivered tomorrow as well. Final thing, I promise this is the final thing. I know this is a longer Monday makes than normal. Um, I uh, so we don't celebrate Halloween uh, in the same way that um, you might. So we don't sort of dress up as horrible things. We don't like the scary bits um, and all the darkness. We go for the light stuff. We're Christians, so we believe that Jesus is the light of the world. Um, so I made some lanterns. So I did this with the boys and this is the most beautiful craft I think I've possibly ever done. I know it doesn't look like much now, although I mean I think it still looks beautiful, but when you pop a candle in there and it's dark, I'll pop a photo up so you can see, um, it is so beautiful. These are all flowers that I um, picked from uh, the garden. So this is really personal to us, oops, candle. Um, this one, let's take the candle out. Um, and because the boys chose flowers earlier in the summer, we went to a, um, a gardening centre and they, uh, a garden centre and they chose flowers that they wanted to grow. And Archie chose um, some pansies that were called fire pansies. So that's this one and this one. 
and they weren't flowering at all when we bought them and we planted them outside and they grew and they flowered and we he occasionally likes to bring me a flower and I can't bear to throw them away so I press them all so I put them all in a book and I press them in between some kitchen roll to get all the moisture out and then uh, I don't know what to do with them so we made these and then I went out and picked some more flowers the pink petals are from roses that a friend bought me this week um, after we were put in lockdown again by ourselves um, she bought me some roses and left them on my doorstep along with some sweets and some donuts which is an amazing amazing thoughtful gift so there's that and there's this one which has got Teddy's chosen pansy on it um, so that's Teddy's and then I've got some strawberry leaves that have gone bright red and these ones are amazing uh, so and some eucalyptus leaves as well so that was my lantern and then I did one completely by myself so the rest were the, the boys did help me with the other ones and I did this one completely which was just me so I'll put a picture up of what they look like. These were rose petals from my beautiful David Austin roses at the back of my garden. And some Hebe leaves and things. I just thought it was so beautiful. It's really easy. Uh, so you just cover it in a layer of PVA glue, stick the things on, and then wait for that to dry, and then cover it again with another layer. And hopefully, I mean, I know some of them are sort of slightly discolored already. Some of these leaves have lost some of their pink. Uh, petals have lost some of their pink but um, I'm really hoping that they especially the ones that have been pressed beforehand like this one and I did press them all a little bit beforehand but probably not long enough that they will be sort of preserved in the glue I'm hoping anyway anyway so that's Teddy's that's Archie's and that's mine and we loved making them and the boys absolutely love putting candles in them and lighting them and they look so beautiful on the table while we're having dinner it's just a positive thing to enjoy while the nights are a bit darker. The evenings and dinner time's a bit darker. Anyways, that's the end of Monday Makes. That was a long one, wasn't it? I think I've done everything. I have done everything. Right, I'm going to go and make another one of these for my sister and do some more knitting. And I hope you all have a lovely crafty week.